Hey friends, what's up? Welcome back to Babylon Talmud. Today we're studying Daf Yud Aleph, Daf 11 of Masech Daf <laughs> And friends, what are we going to talk about? We're going to talk about the birds that are hanging out on the balcony in front of their Dove Hotel. And we're going to wrap up that discussion. We get to a new Mishnah, um, which discusses taking a pestle to chop meat on it, as well as um, spreading out a um, hide on the floor um, on Yom Tif fun stuff and then um, we uh, get to a th- another Mishnah that talks about uh, removing like shutters from stores that so you could put it out and put your wares on it and sell things on uh, Yom Tif without money of course mm. friends let's get started all the way to the top of the Fyod so the Mishnah had said that if um, that if uh, you had left the bird, right, that if the day before Yantif, you went up to the uh, dove coat and the birds were inside their hotel room, Kielu, and um, you designated them when they were inside, and then you come back tomorrow and now they're outside. So we say, Asun, you're not allowed to chop the birds on Yantif uh, to eat them. So, so let's say that this supports Reb Chanino. What does Reb Chanino say? That if we have to choose between Rov and Karov, if we have to uh, uh, choose between a majority and a um, proximity, and we go after the majority. So the majority being that, well, these are only two of the world's multitudes of birds. I don't know. How many birds are there? Dennis, how many birds are there in the world? I don't know. At least five. <laughs> Which makes um, the majority not inside the um, hotel, Dove Hotel. Uh, I don't know, millions, billions. Uh, Mistama, there's more birds than there are people, and there's billions of people. At least that's what they tell us. So, ich weiß nicht. So, so the rove would be that chances are, you know, if we had to kind of like take a look at all of the birds in the world versus like these two birds and you designated the birds when they were inside the Dove Hotel and now they're out on their balcony. And the question is, are these the same or are they different? Well, if we go based on the majority, being that the majority of the the vast majority of the world's bird populations are outside of this Dove Hotel room. So Mistama, these are different birds. However, if we go based on proximity, which is, I mean, the balcony of this Dove Hotel room is literally right out. It's like right right next to where they were at the time that you designated them. You designated them, they were inside their hotel room. And now we see two birds outside the hotel room on the balcony. That's pretty close to where you uh, designated them. So if we go based on the majority, which is that the majority of the world's birds are outside of this Dove Hotel room, so we would say that these are different birds out in the balcony. But if we go based on proximity, we'll say, well, this is very close to where you designated them. You designated them in the hotel room, now they're on the balcony. So I would say that they're the same birds. And from the fact that we're saying that they're Asurin, so it sounds like when you have to choose between majority or proximity, we go based on majority. Omar Abayi Bidaf. So Abayi says, not necessarily, because on that uh, balcony, on this board, on this balcony that's Kila, outside there, the hotel room, um, lots of different birds kind of come and hang out on this board. And therefore, even on the board, which is right next to the hotel room, right, it's uh, very proximate. Is that like a word? Uh, like very close by. So even the birds that are very close by, chances are they also came from some other place because lots of birds would just kind of fly out and hang out on the on the balcony. And then when the birds, when the doves from in the hotel room kind of vacate, so then the doves from the balcony will go into the hotel room. Um, so even the doves hanging out on the balcony um, are very often just birds that came from random places. So actually both majority and proximity lend themselves to being... Um, not the birds that you designated. So only if you find the birds inside the hotel room where you designated them, then you could chop them and eat them. Rav Omar, So Rav says actually that we're talking about, right, as we had said, this is a dove hotel with different layers of uh, rooms. So we had talked about like room 1A and 1B, but now you can have room 1A and 2A, right? Kilu, one room on top of the other one. So, Rav Omar, Bishnekinen Zolamayla Mizo Askinon, we're talking about 
um, two nests, one on top of the other. The two hotel rooms in the Dove Hotel, right? Room 1A and room 2A. Room 1A and room 2A. So, one above the other. Now, there are birds in room 1A as well as in room 2A. Okay, now, you don't even have to tell me about the following situation, which is, Zimin betachtona, he goes to room 1A and he says, Hey, fellows, I ain't gonna eat you. Velo zimin ve'elyona. But he didn't make that uh, proclamation to the birds in the, uh, in room 2A. Umatsu betachtona, velo matsu ve'elyona. And then he comes back the next way, ne- the next day, and sure enough, he finds Two birds on the on ru, by room one A where he designated them. However, they're outside. They're on the balcony, and in room two A, there's no birds. So Kilu on Erev Yom Tif, there were birds in room inside room one one A and inside room two A. He comes back the next day, and the only birds he sees are birds on the balcony of room one A, not inside room one A where he designated them. So the question is. Are these, right, did the birds from room 2A fly away and the birds from room 1A just went out to hang out on their balcony? Or do we say that the birds from room 1A that he designated flew away and the birds from room 2A went down to hang out on the balcony of room 1A? So So what we do say is in fact the latter, which is that the birds that he designated from room 1A, Taka flew away somewhere else. And the birds from room 2A uh, made their way down to the balcony of room 1A. And these are different birds that you did not set aside. And therefore, you can't eat them. But even, right, so we had said you don't need to tell me about that case. Because that's sort of the obvious case that we'll assume that the birds from the top one just kind of lowered themselves down to the to, to the lower balcony. However, Zimein... Um, but even zimen ba'elyona velo zimen batachtona, that if he um, designated the birds for lunch to be from the birds uh, from room two uh, two a, and velo zimen batachtona, and he didn't say anything to the birds in room one a, uva umatza ba'elyona, and then tomorrow the next day on yomtif he finds that there are two birds not inside room two a but on the balcony of room two a. Velo matzah batachtona and uh, room 1A was uh, vacated. So again, the question is, are these birds hanging out on the balcony of room 2A, just the birds from inside room 2A from the day before that went out, uh, you know, to enjoy the sun on the balcony? Or do we say that the birds from room 2A flew away and the birds from room 1A made their way upstairs to the balcony of room 2A? Even in that case, even though it's less probable, the Gemara answers, right? Even though it's less probable that or I might think that it's less probable that the birds uh, went upstairs to room 2A, right? Meaning, in the first case, in the previous case, the birds from room 2A went down to room 1A. That's more probable than to say, apparently, that the birds from room 1A would go up to room 2A. But nonetheless, anachnami asire, we say that um, you're not allowed to eat these birds, damirim, because we say, anach azula that the birds from room 2A flew away somewhere, and the birds from room 1A made their way upstairs to the balcony of room 2A and um, you never set aside the birds from room 1A so therefore uh, you're not allowed to eat them. The mice, uh, you're going to have to find something else to eat. Now if the only birds that are darting, that are around are these two birds and they were inside before and now they're outside so then you're allowed to eat them. What are we talking about? Well, if the birds that you had set aside are like big adult birds that can fly far away, well then we should have to, so we can't just say that just because there's no other birds around, these must be them. I mean, these are birds that are capable of flying far. We have to assume that they talk, a, you know, if, if, you know, if you set that, you designate them inside, now they're outside. You have to assume that, 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 that the ones from earlier flew away and these are uh, different birds. So rather we're talking about not where they could fly really far, but they could hop around the shtickle. So if there's another nest within 50 amas, 
So then you could say that they would uh, hop over to the other nest and maybe these are different birds. And if there's no uh, nest uh, within 50 amas uh, of the dove coat, so then, um, so then Mimele, they didn't go anywhere, right? Because these birds that are still young and can only hop around. So if there's another nest within 50 amas, so then okay, maybe they went to the other nest. But if there isn't, so then Mimele, they didn't go anywhere and these are the same fagels. Same birds. Any hopper, a hopper, any bird that hops about doesn't hop about more than 50 amis. No, so what are we talking about? No, no, so what are we talking about? So if they're full grown birds, then we have to assume that they flew away. If they're hoppers, well then just if there's a, if there's a fifth, if there's a nest within 50 amis, and mimele, uh, maybe it went to the other nest. If there's no nest within 50 amas, so in the mele, these are the same birds. So, no. What is it? So, the olam di'ike came beso chamishim amas. So, the Gemara answer is that really we are talking about a situation where there is a um, nest within 50 amas. However, so of course, it's a little more complicated than that. Than that. This wouldn't be Gemara uh, of Mesech Tabeya if it was just uh, straightforward. Uchagon de kaimim b'keren zavis. Ho, ho. It's Pasha in the corner. Friends, um, I don't know, how should I explain this? Uh, imagine you have like a house, right? Or, or let's just say our, our Dove Code Hotel, right? You have the Dove Code Hotel, no, I don't know, or a house, whatever it is. The point is, you have a corner and around the bend, around the corner, there's another nest. So it's within 50 Amis. The thing is that in order for the um, fagel, for the bird, to go to this other nest that's within 50 amis, it would need to turn the corner, which is a very risky thing for a young bird. Because young birds, once they can no longer see their nest, they're not going to be willing to kind of go further than that. So if they have to turn the corner, so even though it's within 50 amis, if it means that they have to turn the corner, they'll no longer be able to see their nest. So then the mele, um, they're not going to do it. And that's the chiddush. Right, that um, if it's within 50 amis, um, so it's talking about a situation where there's a nest within 50 amis, but it's around the bend, and we're saying that in that case you're allowed to um, eat these birds because um, you know uh, they wouldn't go to the other nest since they would have to turn the corner and they would lose sight of their original nest, and, and they're not going to want to do that. Friends, let us continue with another mission. Bishami om a notli masa eli likatsiv all of basur vesil matirin. Beis Shammai says, you're not allowed to take a pestle, okay? A pestle is usually for like grinding things. You have a mortar, you have a pestle, you, you I don't know what, 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 you knock the Indian in the mortal with the pestle and you, 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 uh, pummel things and you, 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 uh, I don't know, what's the word? Uh, I feel like it's something with like a P. Pulverize things in a mortar with a pestle. Now, I guess you could theoretically chop meat on a pestle as well. So, Beishame Om ain't not nasa eli, the katsif all of bosser. So, Beishame says, look, the maise, a mortar is for pulverizing things. Maybe pulverizing isn't the right thing. Pounding things. It's not for chopping meat. So, therefore, you can't, right? It's a klisham lach to We don't pound things and, you know, grind them up on, um, you know, on, I guess if it's not food or whatever, I don't know, on Yom Tif. Shabbos, it's a malacha. Generally, it's a klishim lachto leiser. Usually, you use a, a, a pestle for things that you're not allowed to do on uh, Shabbos, or I, I guess Yom Tiv also. Even though I don't know if things are allowed for food, then maybe it's okay. I don't know. Oh yeah, maybe. Yeah, maybe that's the point. Maybe that's why Beis Shammai says it's not allowed. But anyways, Beis Hillel Matirin, but Beis Hillel say that you are allowed to take this pestle and uh, cut up meat on it. Sounds fun. Beishamai omim say beishamai ein nosnin es or lifnei ha dorsan v'loyag behenu. Beishamai says if you like slaughter an animal now there is hide. So part of the tanning process of the hide is they would like I guess trample on it or at least let's say stepping on it and stuff would contribute to to tanning the hide. So beishamai says ein nosnin es or lifnei ha dorsan v'loyag behenu elim ken yesh imo kazay is baser. Beishamai says if you slaughter an animal on Yom Tiv, don't take the um, hide and, you know, lay it out where people will kind of step on it because then that will be like kind of related to tanning. Basil Matir and Basil said that you're allowed to 
um, do it. Tana, we learned in a price of a shavim shim cuts of olav basur shalosu the tassel. Everyone agrees. Beishami and Beisil agree that once already, if you've cut up the meat on the pestle, well then you can no longer move it because it's a klishim lachto leiser. So if maybe uh, you need it l'tzarech gufo, if you need it to cut up meat on it, so Beisil says fine, that's okay. But once already, you've cut up the meat on it. Now it's just what? It's just a regular pestle. You can't you can't move the pestle. Uh, it's still muksa. Uh, so if you needed to cut meat, so Mimela, fine, Basil Be- 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 would say it's okay, but, uh, once already you've cut the meat, so then the uh, you, you shouldn't be moving the pestle anymore. Omar Bai says, Abai Machlokas Be'eli. So Abai says that the Machlokas between Beis Shama and Basil, where Beis Shama says that you're not allowed to move this pestle in order to cut meat on it, that's specifically by a pestle. Avo, Betavagarmi, Devakumotor. However, when it comes to A, um, butcher's, uh, what did I write over here? Did I write something? I did. A butcher's board. All right. A butcher's board. When it comes, I don't know, I guess like a board that's used for, by a butcher. I mean, stomach, that's what a butcher's board is. So, Divayako Mutter. Everyone says you'd be allowed to use a butcher's board. The Gemara asks, Pshita, obviously you'd be allowed to use a butcher's board. Why shouldn't I be allowed to? Eli Tanan. The mission only talks about pestles. You can't chop meat on a pestle. Nobody said anything about a butcher's board. Mimela, I could chop meat on a butcher's board. Ma'udatema, I may have thought, who I didn't feel tavagami nami. I may have thought that even a butcher's board oichit, Beishame would say that you're not allowed to uh, chop up meat on the butcher's board. By the Katani Eli, and the only reason why the mission is talking about pestles is Lodiacha Kochen de Basil is to teach you how extreme Basil's opinion is. That even uh, even a pestle, even something that normally you use in a not allowed way, nonetheless, if you want to use it to cut up meat, it's going to be allowed, right? But I might have thought to say that Beshamai nonetheless says that even a butcher's board you wouldn't be allowed to cut meat. The only reason why the mission is talking about a pestle is to teach you uh, the, how much of a chiddush basilil is that even on a pestle, which is a malachto le'iser, they would say you'd be allowed to um, use it to cut meat on it. Komash malon. That is what Abai is teaching us that, that, um, no, everyone would agree, Beshame and Beisil would agree, that when it comes to a butcher's board, uh, you'd be allowed to cut meat on it on Yom Tev, the Amr, that those who say, Amr Abai, lo nitzcho ela afilu tav regami chadate. Now those who say that according to Abai, um, what, what the chiddush of the butcher's board is not just any butcher board, even a brand new butcher's board, be, um, everyone would agree that you're allowed to use it. Ma'udatema, I may have thought to say, I may have thought to say, well, he might change his mind and he won't end up using the butcher's board, in which case he ended up moving it for no reason. Right? It's a brand new butcher's board. Maybe I might think that Peshami would say that maybe he would change his mind and then he won't end up using it. It'll be, you know, a tircha for no reason. And therefore, maybe Peshami would say that he's not allowed to use the butcher's board, the new butcher's board, Kamash Malan. That Beis Shammai says, no, everyone, Beis Shammai, Beis Hill, everyone agrees that you'd be allowed to uh, move the butcher's board and to cut meat on it. One second. We just said that we had a half minute to say that maybe according to Beis Shammai, um, he might change his mind and he won't cut the meat on it and then it'll be a, a, a tircha. Beis Shammai is not concerned about that. They're not concerned that it'll change his mind. But wait, is that really true that Beis Shammai isn't concerned about people changing their mind? What about the fact that we have a brisa that says, We don't bring a butcher or a knife to an animal. We don't bring a butcher or a knife to an animal. And not an animal to a butcher or a knife. And Basil says that you're allowed to. Basil says you're not allowed to bring a butcher or a knife spices and a pestle to a mortar and you can't bring a um, mortar to a uh, to spices or a pestle and Basil says you're allowed so let's go fight the first sticker first tickle so says the Gemara meaning ha huh. The, 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 right, we said you're not allowed to bring a butcher and a knife to, uh, a, a, a shaykhit and a knife to a, um, animal and not vice versa. You're also not allowed to bring spices and a pestle to a mortar and vice versa, right? So, why not? So the point is, there's some kind of thing that we're concerned that he's going to change his mind. And the Gemara is kind of explaining it now. 
in sort of in the answer to the question is also explaining what the concern is. Meaning when it comes to the butcher, so we said that you don't bring the butcher and the knife to the animal and not vice versa. Because what if you end up saying, meh, actually, I don't want this animal. This animal's weak. I want, let's get a better one. So you end up schlepping it over for no reason. So in that case, we see that Bisham and Mimele is, is, is concerned about, about, you know, yeah, he might change his mind in that case. I understand. Kader Nami, also when it comes to a, 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 um, a, a, a cooked dish. Nami also nam luche, he might switch his mind, change his mind. Maybe he'll change his mind and he'll say that, you know, so we'll, we'll bring over the, the pestle and the mortar and the spices in order to, you know, spice up this dish that needs spicing. Maybe he'll change his mind and say, you know what? Let's not have this spicy dish. Let's just have a regular dish that doesn't need spicing. In which case, he slept over these things for no reason. Ella, but But what are we going to say over here? What's the concern? But what's the concern by the butcher's board? Wow, it's funny. It was like I feel like it was a little bit hard to explain the flow over here. But the point is that right uh, um, um, in our Mishnah we said that according to Bishama, you're not allowed to bring over a uh, pestle in order to chop meat on it, and we said that that's specifically a pestle. But a butcher's board, Beishamai would say you are allowed to bring over to chop meat, even if it's a new butcher's board. And we say we're not concerned that, that, that Beishamai is, is, Beishamai is not concerned that he's going to change his mind and not end up chopping meat on it, in which case he schlepped it over for no reason. Beishamai is not concerned about that. Now the question is, but one second, we see that when it comes to um, Shrita, we say don't schlep over the animal and the knife and the butcher, according to Beishamai. And then when it comes to um, uh, spices, also Beishamai says, don't schlep over the mortar or the pestle and the spices. Because in both those cases, we're concerned that he's going to change his mind. Maybe he wants a fatter and a fat, fatter animal. Maybe he wants a, uh, maybe he's going to change his mind and he wants a, a dish without spices. So, so what's the deal? How come in one case he's concerned about changing his mind, yet when it comes to the butcher's board, we say he's not concerned that he's going to change his mind. So the answer is, look, because when it comes to the animal, when it comes to the spices, there's a very real concern. Maybe he doesn't want the animal. Maybe he does want a fatter animal, not the one that you're going to slap over. Maybe he is going to change his mind and he's not going to want that food. But when it comes to the butcher's board, there really isn't much that he's going to change his mind about because he already slaughtered the animal. He clearly intends to be eating this animal. And to eat this animal, he definitely has to cut it up. So Mimele, there, you know, the chances of him saying, you know what? We're not going to cut up this animal. It's very slim. They just slaughtered an animal. In his stomach, they're going to be eating it. In which case, you could bring over the butcher's board, cut up the meat. There isn't really much of a chance that you, you know, you're not going to end up doing that. So therefore, but even, you know, Beishami says that you're allowed to bring over this uh, butcher's board in order to cut up the meat for it on Yom Tiv. Beishami omr me or So Beishami says you're not allowed to put um, the hide out for where where people could stand on it on. Um, Yomtiv. Tana Bisham Chamolchin Olav Basur Litsali. And we learn a Brahsa, but both Bisham and Basil agree that you would be allowed to um you know if you want you're gonna roast meat, so you'd be allowed to salt the meat on top of the hide, even though it might contribute a bit to the tanning process. Uh, however, um apparently roasted meat doesn't require as much um um salting as like um uh like what Boiled meat, potted meat, uh, what, what, what was the alternative? Um, kidera, yeah, I guess like cooking it like in a pot, I guess, for like a stew or something, I guess you need more salt, I guess, whatever. Okay, so, both, so Bishame admits, he says, look, both Bishame and Basil agree that Shemolchan Olaf Basr Litsali, that you'd be allowed to, um, salt on top of the hide, uh, meat for, that you're gonna be roasting, and, um, even though, yeah, the salt might contribute, contribute a shtickle to tanning the hide, but um, it's okay because you don't need that much salt for roasting. Sounds fun. Amr Abai says Abai lo shanu el litzali ava lekadere lo. So it says Abai. Now this is limited to roasted meat, but like stewed meat, um, you need more salt on that, and you would not be allowed to salt it on the um, hide because that would be too much salt and would be like kind of part of the tanning process. Pshita litzali tnan. So. Obviously, we're li- it's limited to roasted meat and not stew meat because um, because it says roasting, not stewing. So, uh, also what Abai is teaching is that 
no, it, it's mamish limited to just roasted meat. If you, you know, it, let's say you like to salt your meat, your roasted meat a lot, a lot, um, so that it's like a stew to the like stew salting levels, then that would not be allowed. Specifically, roasted meat is what's allowed. Um, just plain old roasted meat salt levels, but not the salt levels, um, that would be of like, uh, stew salt levels. Let's go weiter. Tanu Rabbonin, the rabbis taught, a mochen is a chalovin. Ho ho. Okay, we don't, uh, salt the, uh, fat, the forbidden fats. Ben mahaprin boyen, we don't flip them over. Mishum rabios, rabbi yoshua amu, they said the name rabbi yoshua, shotrum beruach, you could talk up, um, like, uh, spread them out in the wind and, uh, preserve them. Now we, I'll gobble you say this on top of, uh, pegs because, you know, if you slaughter the animal and you have these fats that you're not allowed to eat and you just gotta leave them there, they can go kind of bad. So, you know, if you kind of salt them or something, I guess they won't like spoil or something. So we say you're not allowed to salt them. But Bishua says though, you can kind of spread them out on, um, these pegs. Sounds nice. Amr of Masna, Aloha Krib Yoshua. Says of Masna, the Aloha is taka like Rabbi Yoshua. Ikida Amri of Masna ain Aloha Krib Yoshua. To those who say that it says of Masna, says of Masna that the Aloha is not like Rabbi Yoshua. But Shomer Mandam Aloha Krib Yoshua. It's Tirch. I need him to say that, right? So I understand according to the version that says that Rav Masna says that the Aloha is like Rabbi Yoshua. That's a Chiddush. Sagadat Echamina, because I would have thought to say, Yochid Rab Malacha Kirabim. That whenever you have uh, an individual opinion, a single opinion versus a majority opinion, so of course you go based on the majority. Rav Mas is saying a chiddush, which is that actually the halacha is like Rabbi Yeshua in this case, even though he is the minority opinion. Kamash Malon halacha kiyachid. So then he's teaching us a chiddush that the halacha tak is like Rabbi Yeshua, even though he's a singular opinion, he's a minority opinion. El Manda Amri in halacha pshita. But according to the man the who says that the Lacha is not like Rabbi Yoshua, isn't that obvious? Yachid Rabbi Malacha Kiram. That whenever you have a single opinion versus a, a, you know, a majority opinion, obviously we're going to paskin like the majority, and therefore we're not going to paskin like Rabbi Yoshua, and we're going to say that you're not allowed to spread out these fats on top of pegs. Mimele, because he's an individual opinion. So, Ma'adatema, Mestabra Time of Rabbi Yoshua. So, says the Gemara, well, it's not so posh. I do need Rav Masna to tell me that the Lacha is like Rabbi Yeshua, even though, I'm sorry, I do need Rav Masna to tell me that the Lacha is not like Rabbi Yeshua, even though, yes, in general, we would say, Yachid Rav Malacha Krabim, so automatically, the Lacha would not be like Rabbi Yeshua. So why do I need Rav Masna to tell me? I need Rav Masna to tell me that the Lacha is not like Rabbi Yeshua, because, um, Maudetema, I would have thought to say, Mistabra time to Rabbi Yeshua. Well, Rabbi Yeshua's opinion makes sense. The Elo Sharisle, because if you don't allow this fellow to spread out the fats on pegs so that they don't go bad, well, then he might end up not slaughtering at all. And there, and he's what? And he's not, he's gonna, he's gonna hold off and he's not gonna have simchas yomtif. And we want a fellow to be happy on yomtif. So therefore, I may have thought to say, look, the Lacha is like Rabbi Yeshua because we want somebody to be able to spread out these fats on the pegs so that they don't go bad. So that, because if we say that you're not allowed to, then someone's going to say, oh, it's, what am I going to do with all these fats? And he's going to, he's going to end up not slaughtering the, the animal and he's going to lose out on Simchas Yomt. And so I may have thought to say that to prevent such a situation and to, you know, encourage Simchas Yomt, we'll pass in the Rabbi Yeshua and allow people to spread out the fats on the pegs. So Kamash Malan, therefore, we needed, uh, Rav Masan to say, even so, the halacha is not like Rabbi Yeshua, like Rabbi Yeshua, and, um, you're still not allowed to spread out the fats on the pegs, even though that might lead to a situation where a fellow, um, has a lower degree of simchas yomtiv. Umashna may orlif neador, since now one second. But why is this any different than spreading out, um, hide, you know, where people could step on it, right? Because I may have thought, you know, I, I may think that, you know, right, 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 that according to Beis Shammai, I'm sorry, according to Beis Hillel, right, we say that you're allowed to spread out the um, hide where people are going to step on it, right? We said in our mission that according to Beis Hillel, if you slaughter an animal on Yom Tov, you're allowed to take the hide and you're allowed to spread it out on the floor um, where people can step on it. How come? Well, because if you don't allow him to do that, then maybe he's not going to slaughter the animal. Because what's he going to do with this hide? And maybe he's going to hold out and, 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 and he won't slaughter the animal and he's going to have a, you know, lose out on some chasyomtiv. 
And so therefore, Basil says, look, you're allowed to take the hide and you're allowed to, you're allowed to put it out where people are going to step on it, um, you know, in order so that, uh, you know, in order to encourage people to slaughter animals and, and enjoy Yom Tif. Because if you don't let them put out the hides, then they might not slaughter the animals and they'll have a lower degree of Simchas Yom Tif. So how come when it comes to the hides, um, Basil says, look, you're allowed to put them out where people are going to step on it. And by doing so, we're encouraging people to slaughter animals. And if we wouldn't let them do that, then maybe they might not slaughter the animals. So how come that's our conclusion when it comes to the hides? And yet we're saying that when it comes to the fats, the Allah is not like Rabbi Yeshua. And you're not allowed to put out the fats on the pegs, even though that might lead to a, a, a lower level of uh, Simchas Yom Tif main Tenants, maybe people slaughtering animals and some consumptive stuff. Uh, Milsa. So the Gemara answers, well, there's a difference. There's a difference between um, the laying the hide out on the floor and uh, putting the fats up on pegs. Which one do you think is like a more normal activity? If we had to choose between putting out sort of an animal skin on the floor where it, almost like a rug where people could step on it or putting out animal fat on pegs so that it doesn't go rancid which one sort of blends in more is like more maybe you can get away with more Mistama putting out the animal hide on the floor as like a, 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 a thing that people step on I mean people do it nowadays also with like I, right there's like people use like animal skins for like rugs maybe I don't know not me so awesome la mucha milsa so the Gemara says, look, when it comes to a hide, it's not super unusual. You know, a person sees that um, the hide is, is on the floor. Like, oh, okay, you could sit on the hide, you could step on the hide, whatever it might be. But over here, when it comes to the fats that are, you know, spread out on pegs, people are going to say, my time is surely Rabbanu. So people are going to say, oh, how come the rabbis allowed me to put out the fat on the pegs? You stomach so that it doesn't go to uh, spoil. Well, what's the difference if I spread them out on pegs? I may as well just salt it. Now, salting it, everyone agrees, even Rabbi Yeshua agrees, is not allowed. So we're concerned over there that it's too obvious that you're leaving out the fats so that they don't go, that they don't spoil. And therefore, people might draw their own conclusion like, oh, I guess you're allowed to prevent things from spoiling. Let me just salt it. That's a problem. Whereas um, the hides on the floor kind of like fits in more like, oh, okay, that's interesting. You have a hide there and you could sit on it. Okay, very nice. You're not necessarily going to say, oh, I'm allowed to tan hides on Yom Tov. Om Rav Yehuda Amr Shmuel, Moleach Odom Kama Chatichos Basur Bevasachas. Says of Yehuda in the name of Shmuel that a fellow is allowed to salt um, several pieces of meat all at once. Even though he only needs one um, piece of meat. So okay, if he's got a whole bunch of um, meat there and he's salting meat anyways and it's not really much more effort in order to salt more meat so you can just kind of do them all at once even though you technically only need one of them. Rav Adabar Ahava, Mayrimu, Malach, Gaima, Gaima. Rav Adabar Ahava, I guess, I don't know, it sounds to me like maybe this was a little bit of a different case where it was actually more effort in order to um, salt each individual piece and therefore it would be extra tircha since he really only needs one, but he would be like elusive about it. Rav Adabar Ahava, what he would do is he would salt one piece and he would be like, you know what, actually this other piece looks taka tastier. Let me actually salt that one. That's what I want. And then he would go to the next one and say, you know what? This one actually looks better than the other two. And he would salt that one. And like that, he would be kind of like in a sneaky kind of way. He would end up salting all of the pieces of uh, meat. I guess maybe it's like pre- to preserve them or something. Beishami Om says the new Mishnah in Mesalkin is Satrisin Biyomtiv. So Beishami says that you're not allowed to remove the... Um, uh, um, uh, oh gosh, what are those things called? What are those things? The shutters. You're not allowed to remove the shutters, or like in a sense, it's also like a, a, a door in a sense from these um, like bastot. Biyomtiv and yomtiv vesil matir naflach. Vesil says not only can you remove them, you can even put them back. Right? Uh, what's a basta? Anybody who lives in Nachlaot near Shuk Machne Yehuda, everything's basta in Machne Yehuda. Pasta basta. What what are, what are the bastas are there in Machnihura? There's like now of course I can't think about I can't remember anything, but I feel like there's like I don't know, what what well pasta basta is the that, that that's that that's probably the most successful basta one, I think. And that's just one I'm not thinking of. But I feel like um 
I don't know. Now, of course, I can't think of anything. That's why I can't think of everything because like everything just like when they come up, they just like add pasta to it and then it becomes like a shook kind of store. Anyways, like a pasta is like a, almost like a cubicle in the shook, you know. So um, um, anyways, uh, now I'm like thinking about what are all the pasta names. Um, anyways, um, where am I? What am I talking about? Right. So there would be these like bastos, which is, these are like cubicles that they would have in their markets and they would have like a door on the on the cubicle and you can kind of remove it and then like put your wares on it and sell them. So Beshama says, Ain Mesalkan Satris and Biomtiv, you're not allowed to take off these doors um, on Yomtiv, whereas Basil says, not only can you take them off, you can even put them back on. As we said the other day, that you know, if they're open, then people can kind of buy things from them. Now they wouldn't talk money on Yomtiv, but um the if you needed to get up is something. You know, uh, I don't know, spices or something. So you go to the spice guy and he'd be open and, and you know, and, and you'd work it out and he would, and you would have spices. Um, Zok the Gemara, my treason. What are these, um, you know, like, uh, door thingies? Amar Ula Trise Chanuyos. The door thingies of these bastot. The Amar Ula, and said Ula Shloshet Varmitu Sofon Mishum Trilasun. There are three examples where they allowed, um, things in the end in order Right, because of the beginning. What does that mean? The and these are them. Or the Fnea Dorsan, as we had talked about um a few minutes ago, that you're allowed to spread out, uh hide on the on the on the floor where people are gonna step on it. Right? We said that you're allowed to do that because if you're not allowed to do that, then people might not slaughter animals for Simchas Yomtiv. And we want people to slaughter animals for Simchas Yomtiv, so therefore we say, Okay, just you know, what am I gonna do with the hide? Put it out, people step on it and I guess it'll kind of like, you know, help you out in the tanning process somewhat. Vitrise Chanuyos, as well as you're allowed to put back the um uh these like doors onto the uh bastot on Yomtif because we want people to take them off and to be able to make things available to people on Yomtif to you know to to get from their stores. So therefore in order to encourage people to open up their stores so that people can get things on Yomtif, um um we said you can even then put back the doors afterwards. Mikhazaris with Tia Bamikdosh at the end of Mesakta Erevin. We learned about we learned about another a number of things that they would be allowed to do in the Besamikdosh. One of them was that you would be allowed to um if you took you, you know the avoda, when you do the avoda, a koanim that do the service in the temple, so there cannot be anything between their hands and like the Klesharis, right? The things that they're holding. So if they had a bandage on, they'd have to remove it. Now we said that you're even allowed to put back the bandage back on afterwards, right? And we're saying that that's because, well, if you don't let him put it back on afterwards, he might not take it off in the first place and then he won't be able to do the avoda. Fine. The Rachba Omar says, Rachba, um, Reb Yehuda, the name of Reb Yehuda, there's a very interesting Rashi here that why is Rachba calling it Rebbe Yehuda? It's really Rav Yehuda, right? Like Rav Yehuda. So why is he calling Rebbe Yehuda? So Rashi, should, Rashi suggests that maybe because since Rachba was a Talmud Muvak of Rav Yehuda, he was like a, a very close town of Rav Yehuda. So he referred to Rav Yehuda as Rebbe Yehuda. As like, this is my Rebbe. Um, but anyways, very interesting Rashi. Afa poseh chaviso umaskil isaso al gav aregel valiba to Rav Yehuda de Amr Yigmar. Um, says Rachba that even somebody who opens up um, his, his, his wine barrel or uh, has like some dough during the regel, um, even afterwards, it would still be tahor, according to um, Rabbi Yehuda. What this means is that in general, um, you know, if you'd have wine or bread or something like that, if an Amaretz would touch it, so then it would become, we'd have to assume that, right, that it's tummy. So, however, on the um, Shalash Regalim, in order to encourage camaraderie, so we kind of waive this, like, um, concern. And we say that you can open up your barrels of wine and your bread and stuff. And, and, and you know, even if Amma Aretz is touch it, don't worry about it. It's not, you know, it's okay. Don't worry about it. It's fine. And says Rabbi Yehuda that even after the Yom Tif, you know, you, from that point on, you shouldn't have uh, Amma Aretz touch it anymore because, you know, that now the Gezerah kind of resumes and you don't want Amma Aretz touching the wine and the bread. However, and the dough. However, um, says Rabbi Yehuda, Anything that was already opened and touched on the Yom Tif could remain, you know, pure and you can like consume it and sell it and all that kind of stuff. Because, you know, if it, you know, we even allow it after the Yom Tif to remain in its state, even though Amir Aris may have touched it, because if you don't allow it 
to sort of remain in that pure state, well then they might not open it up in the first place because what am I going to do with it after Yom Tif? So Rabbi Yehuda says, look, you know, even after Yom Tif, it remains Tahor, even though it was touched by Amma Aretz, so that you'll open up um, your wine and your bread during the festival and, and show camaraderie and, and, um, and uh, it sounds very nice. Okay. Um, where are we? Fine. Wait a second. Why is Ula telling me that you're allowed to put out hide for where people could step on it? Hide from an animal that you started on. Yom Tov, you're allowed to put it out where people could step on it. What? Why is Ula teaching us this? Don't we already know it from our Mishnah? That Basil says that you're allowed to put out the hide where people could step on it. Well, I may have thought to say, well, what's the reason why Basil says that you're allowed to put out the hide where people could step on it. Well, because theoretically you could sit on it. There's a use for it. And even if you slaughtered an animal on the Erev Yom Tif, still I'd be able to, on Yom Tif, to put out that uh, hide because there's a use for it. People could, people could sit on it. Komash Malon, what Ula is saying is that the reason why Basil says that you're allowed to put out this hide where people could step on it is it was sofen mishum trilasen is really in order to encourage simchas yom tif that we allow you on yom tif to put out this hide because if we wouldn't allow you to do that well then you might not slaughter animals and have simchas yom tif so therefore Rabbi Yehuda therefore Beisila says that you're allowed to put it out and step on it in order to encourage people to slaughter animals and enjoy and and, and, and enjoy yom tif um, therefore the yom tif in Therefore, this, this is limited to animals slaughtered on Yom Tif that were, you know, part of this motivation to encourage Simchas Yom Tif, the Erev Yom Tif, low. But any animals slaughtered before Yom Tif when, you know, there, you know, there wasn't really a, a, a Simchas Yom Tif motivator. So, so you would not be allowed to put out those, um, hides where people could step on them. Trise Chanuyos Nami Tanino. Now, in fact, the Gemara, all, uh, why is Ula teaching me about the doors of the, of the Bastot, of the stores? We know that from our Mishnah, that Basil says that you're allowed to, you know, even return, even put back the doors. So, to say, Well, I may have thought to say, yeah, how come Basil says that you're allowed to uh, remove and put back the door of the Bastot? Because maybe his opinion is that there's no concept of bone, of building, when it comes to vessels, when it comes to kalim, like a door. And there's no concept of breaking, uh, you know, of destroying, of stira, when it comes to a vessel. And even for a house, I'd be able to, you know, remove and attach a door from a house as well. And therefore, no, we're saying that really the reason for um, why Basil says that you are allowed to remove and put back this door is because we want to encourage people to open up their shops for people to be able to get things on Yom Tif, and therefore we allow you to put back the door so that, you know, you won't have to worry about taking it down in the first place and, and that way people will be um, taking care of each other on Yom Tif. And therefore, the Chanuyos in, this applies only to Basto to stores, they bought them low, but not to uh, your house. There, you wouldn't be able to just take off a door and put it back on to your house. Um, also asked the Gemara, wait a second, putting back a bandage in the Beis Mikdash, I know that from the Mishnah at the end of Erevin. Why do I need Ula to teach me this? So again, uh, so says the Mishnah at the end of, at the end of Erevin that you can. Uh, put back on a bandage in the Beis HaMikdash, but not so outside of the Beis HaMikdash. Well, I may have thought to say that the reason why you're allowed to put back on a bandage is because of the concept of Ein Shavuz Mikdash. That in, that, with that, it's a Dinder Abonon. Why we wouldn't be allowed to put back on a bandage and in the, and in the Beis HaMikdash, there are no Dinder Abonon, Ein Shavuz Mikdash. And therefore, if you look at the labar avoda, maybe then even out, not in the context of avoda, maybe even outside of the context of avoda, I should be able to um, put back on a bandage because ain't shvus by mikdash. So, so right, maybe somebody wants to like eat meat or something, and he's washing his hands to eat meat. Maybe he should be allowed to take off and put back on his bandage. So, kamash money to your sofen mishum tchilason. 
No, so therefore what Ula is teaching us is that the reason why you're allowed to put back, put back on a bandage in the base of Mikdosh is because in order to encourage you to do the avoda, we say, look, you could take off, you know, take off the bandage, you could always put it back on later and now go out and have a good time and do the avoda. To buy avoda in, to lab by avoda low, that this would be specifically for somebody who's doing avoda, but if you're not doing avoda, don't rely upon ancient Shvus Mikdosh to allow it. Um, so therefore, uh, we need, um, Ula to teach me all of these cases to say that the reason why they're permitted is specifically because of we allow you to do these things so that you will, you know, do it, you know, do it in the first place. Whether that is slaughtering meat for some chasyomtiv, whether it is opening up your store to provide people with things or um, doing the avoda in the Beis HaMikdash. Poseh chaviso nami tanino. Now, fact, the Gemara, why do we need rochbe to teach me that somebody opens up his, um, you know, wine on the Shal Shugalim, it remains pure even after the Shal Shugalim. That's also a Mishnah. A fellow who opens up his wine barrel or um, his dough on the Shal Shugalim. Rabbi Yudah Omer says Rabbi Yudah Yigmor, um, you know, even after the, the uh, Shal Shugalim, he can continue to sell them and it's Tahor. Omer, he shouldn't sell it anymore afterwards um, because after the Regel, it's already going to be, uh, you know, right, right, the, right, the thing expires. Kilu, the, 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 uh, permission, right, the, with the fact that we waive the, the, the tomb of the Amea Aretz on the regal that expires after the regal, according to Chum, but according to Buddha, it, it remains and you can, you know, still kind of sell whatever, whatever you opened on the regal. Maudetema may have thought, Tumas Amea Aretz, but regal, Kitayr Shavira Bun. I may have thought to say that, um, the tuma of the Amoretz on the regel is like completely waived. And even if you weren't necessarily, um, you know, selling it, right? Even if you didn't necessarily, yeah, open it up and like sell it on, 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 um, on the Shalosh Rugal. You might think that just posh it. All of the tuma of Amoretz is completely waived on the Shalosh Rugal. And that's it. And therefore what um, Rochba is teaching us is that no, it's not that the tomb of the Amarits of the Amarits is completely waived. It's that we sort of like kind of don't make it a, a showstopper during the regal in order to um, um, uh, encourage camaraderie between the people. However, um, after the regal, it kind of um, you know comes back. You know, so anything that an Amarits touched on the regal, you know, after the regal uh, would technically be. Uh, Tommy now, but Rabbi Yudah says that in order to uh, encourage people to kind of open up and share their uh, wine and their bread with people during the regel, we say even afterwards it will, you know, remain tahor as long as no other Amea Aretz uh, touch it. Hischilin lo hischilo, fine. Ve'ula, my time lo, Omer, ha. So how come Ula didn't include the, the, the wine and the bread like Rachba does? So, but, um, so the Gemara answers, well, Ula is not, he was staying out of Machlokas, right? Meaning when it came to the wine and the bread, it was a Machlokas between Rabbi Yudah and the Rabbanon. Ula's examples, there was no Machlokas. What do you mean? These are also Machlokas, right? Uh, the, 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 the hide, the, the doors of the Bastot, Machlokas Bishamim and Basilo. So Bisham and Bimokim Basilo in a Mishnah, to which the Gemara answers, no, that Bishamai relative to Basilo, is not is not really a thing. Meaning, if the, the halacha is like Basil objectively, and that's that. If Basil says that you're allowed to put out the hide on Yom Tif, or if Basil says that you're allowed to um, remove and put back the the doors of the bastot, that is that. There's no machlokas there, as far as we're concerned. Okay. Says the Gemara, Masnisin Delo Ki Aitano. Okay. Let's say that our Mishnah is not like the following uh, Tana. Let's see the Tanya. So we're learning about. So Amr Shim Ben Elazar. Says Reb Shimon Ben Elazar, "Modim beShami veSilal shemisalkin is atrisim biyomtiv." Unachlu kol lahachzir. Says Reb Shimon Ben Elazar that beShami and beSilal both agree that you're allowed to remove the door to the basta on yomtiv. That's no machlokas. Lo nechlu kol lahachzir. The machlokas is only can you put back the door. She beShami omim ein machzirin. VeSilal omim af machzirin. That beShami says you're not allowed to put back the door. Basil says, yes, you are. 
Bamar Dvarma Murim, when do we say this? Bishyesh Law and Tsir, when there is like a um, hinge on the door. Um, Aval, Einlo, Tsir, but if there's no hinge or a pivot, I think. Devyakol Mutter, even Beishama is going to agree that it is um, permitted. Okay. Beatanib, we learn in the Brisa, Bamar Dvarma Murim, Bishyesh Law and Tsir. Wait, when do we say that there's machlokes? That's when there's no hinge. Aval yesh lo yentzir. Right, there's machlokes when there's no hinge. Aval yesh lo yentzir. But if there is a hinge or a pivot, divyakol oser. Everyone would agree that it is oser. Amar Abayi says Abayi b'sheish lo yentzir. When there's a hinge min atzad on the side, divyakol oser. Everyone would say it's oser. In lo yentzir kol iker. If there's no like hinges or pivots at all, divyakol muter. Everyone would agree that um, it's permitted to take it on and put it. You know, take it off, put it back on. Kipligi, where they argue, Beishla and Sir, Beemsa, where there is a, uh, like, pivot in the middle of this door. Marsava Gazunan, Sir, Beemsa, to Sir Minatsad, and Marsava Lukazunan. Beisham is concerned about when there is a pivot in the middle because, uh, out of concern of when there is a pivot in the side, whereas Basil is not concerned about that, and they say pivot in the middle would be okay. But we see that in our Mishnah, um, base, uh, we say that there's, right, Beishama even says that you're not allowed to take off the door in the first place, whereas in the Brisa we seem to be saying, no, everyone agrees that you could take it off. The question is, how do we relate to putting it back on? So apparently the author of our Mishnah is not like the author of that Brisa. Fun times. Friends, that was Daf Yud Aleph of Masechta Beitza. Friends, who could tell me what Daf Yud Aleph talked about? The first part of Daf Yud Aleph talked about um, the birds, and if you had set aside birds inside of like the, the coop, and now it's the dovecote, and now it's outside on the balcony, can you use it? So we saw um, two opinions. We saw the opinion of Abayi who says, well, we're talking about birds that are kind of, you know, there's lots of birds that hang out on the balcony, so to speak, of like the Dove Hotel. And therefore, it's both rove and karov indicating that um, these birds are other birds, so therefore you're not allowed to eat it. Um, Rava kind of has this interesting scenario where you have like two floors of the Dove Hotel and um, you kind of, you know, designate the doves on inside one of the hotel rooms on one floor and then you find it on the balcony on the other floor. So we say in those cases um, it would not be allowed. We then talked about if there are no other birds then it's permitted. We said what are these birds? We said we're, we're talking about you know if there's a nest within 50 amis but it's um, around the corner. So we said that that would be permitted because birds aren't going to go to a place where they can uh, no longer like um, see their original nest. All right sounds fun. Then we moved on to another Mishnah where we see Machlokos between Beis Shama and Beis Hillel regarding if you can move a pestle in order to chop up meat on it, um, as well as can you spread out um, um, a, a um, uh, hide of an animal on the floor where people will step it, step on it. So we said that look, when it comes to the pestle, specifically the the pestle that you're not allowed to bring out, but you would be allowed to bring out a um, butcher's board because. Um, even Beishami would say that you're allowed to bring out a butcher's board because um, since you already slaughtered the animal, Mimele, you're going to be using the uh, butcher's board to cut up the meat. And then we started sort of getting into, you know, segueing into, and then eventually with the new Mishnah, talking about things that were permitted, um, you know, that, that the end of it was permitted for the beginning. And, you know, we gave essentially four examples of this. One of them being that you're allowed to put out the, um, you're allowed to put out the hides, where people could step on it because if you're not allowed to, then you might not um, slaughter animals. We want you slaughtering. We do want you. We do encourage the slaughtering of animals for simchas Um Also, the uh, you're allowed to take off the you're allowed to put back the doors onto the bastot in the market so that you will take them off in order to share your wares with other people um, during the festival. We also said that uh, in the Beis Hamikdash, you're allowed to put put back on bandages so that you will, you know, do the avoda so that you can know even if you have to remove it, uh, you can always put it back on later. And also, uh, it says of Yehuda that when you open up your wine or your, like, um, bread to share with people during the Shalash Rugalim, even though Amiya Aritz may have touched it, you're still going to be able to continue to sell it after the, the uh, festival um, um, because we want to encourage you to be sharing it and having camaraderie on the festival. We say, you know, even after the festival, whatever is left over, you can continue to um, sell. Uh, okay, fun times. That was Daf Yudal from Masech Hope you enjoyed. Peace out.